I am unashamed. What about you? Well, we spent a couple of hours yesterday talking about truth, which you would think that'd be a positive, but we're in till season, and I'm I'm hunting with a crazy uncle, and we hadn't seen any teal in days. So this morning, first of all, a wood duck came in and lit. And so I said, that, that, that's a teal right there. I said, wood duck. He said, that's, he's got a blue patch on his wing. I said, that's a wood duck. He said, I'm telling you. So that's what started the day. This, he, You know, he didn't shoot. I saved that wood duck's life. Because after it got a little lighter. It's against the law to shoot a wood duck yeah. during teal season. So I saved the wood duck. I kept everybody legal. I'm feeling pretty good. Well, then we heard, well, I knew what it was. I didn't have to see that d- duck to know what it was because the sound told me there's a teal that just came by. Well, it lit in the decoys. So I said, get him up because, you know, we're filming. Mm-hmm. And we hadn't got a teal in forever. Five days. And I'm like, let's make this a little sporty, although I don't object to shooting one on the water because the – presentation is what i'm after and we convinced this teal that our fake decoys are real so it would have been fine but i just thought let's be sporty have some fun get him up so i just boom so i said i got that one yep you did you're the only one that shot (laughs) literally five seconds later i never got up because it was four men in the blind yeah. With three shells <clears throat> apiece, and one duck is sitting in the decoys. So you're not even messing so with it. So we turned that over to one of the old coots on side. He's an old coot. <laughs> we didn't turn it over. He just did it. I he said, get up. him up. I he, never got up. I just was but, standing there looking. But, but I was wanting him to get the duck up, and let's yeah. see your gunning skills. Yeah. But he waited till he literally stopped moving. He was just sitting yeah, he didn't and shoot not him. He didn't moving. shoot him while he was swimming. No. He, he waited till he stopped swimming. <laughs> and then was bragging that he got him. I yeah. thought, well, you I can him. get a bunch of seven-year-olds <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Literally 10 seconds later, I just look up, and here's six teal, which at that time I didn't know how many it was. I mean, it was five to eight, are flying in between us and the decoys three feet off the water, four feet off the water. And but you know they move fast, so they turn, and I got up because at this point they're in the decoys. There's no reason to really say cut them. I guess I mean it just happened really fast. But I was fixed to say cut them, and boom, shot fired, which was I believe fell. And then there was a couple other shots, but as soon as the first couple shots rang out, which I didn't see anything fall. Mm-hmm. One of the group peeled to the right. Well, I'm on the far right. So I thought, up oh, because I was thinking to kill them all, everybody's got to shoot their lane. Well, I got everything's going right to left except this one. He's going, he's going out the backside. Well, that's my responsibility. So I'll, boom, deadfold. He hit on the right side of the decoys. So when I pull back left, I see another one. The group is going on to the left. They're shooting at them. I see one going straight out. I boom, miss. He gets up a little bit. Now he's way out there, a little too far, but I thought. You got one shell out. I got one shell. Boom, he folds. Helicopter's down, but I don't think he's dead because the range was so far. Yeah. Well, now, so I'm out of shells. I look back, and there's one duck laying dead that I know I didn't have any part of. But I, I'm looking. The one I shot first is over here on the right. The one out there, he's in the weeds. He's not even in the water. He fell on dry land. And there's one duck in the decoys. Well, the dog runs, because I'm making sure everything's dead, and gets the one I shot. It was about halfway back, and Cy si said, well, I went two for two. <laughs> and so I looked. And I'm thinking one, two, 
and I know I got one out in the weeds that nobody even knows about because I said, boy, that was the longest shot I've made. And they said, oh, you got one in the grass. We started talking about this last yeah. shot I made. I said, oh, yeah, I got one out there in the grass. So now we're down to two ducks because that was not a factor. And I thought, well, I know Cy couldn't have shot this one I shot because it was going the opposite direction. It was way – because if he did, why are you shooting the one duck? Why did you go past five – to shoot mine going the opposite direction. And, you know, we spent two hours talking about truth. And normally when I hear something like that, I just let it go. But I just said, well, where's your other duck? He said, the dog's got him in his mouth. I said, no, that's not your duck. Because <laughs> he picked that one up to the right of the island. He said, no, no. No, he didn't. I said, I, I just saw him do it. Of course, everybody else is being quiet at this time. So then that led to an argument that lasted how long, Phil? About an hour. Lasted an hour. Tempers flared. So finally, we have a cameraman. Yeah. So we said, run the footage back. He filmed it. And so the cameraman says... So there that, were that, there, ought, that ought to remove all doubts. Yeah, got, it's, it's instant replay. We've you got, would we got, think we, got a we we went we we called instant replay, yeah. and there was another factor. So I said that only two ducks left out to the left. I said no, wrong. It was more than two. I said it was three or four. So that was that was a side argument. So the cameraman hollers out because he's away from us. He said when the ducks came in, the first couple of shots. Nothing fell, because there would have been a sub-argument about that, because he said the first time he pulled the trigger, one fell. Well, you, so you were, you were on the right side of, the, of that sub-argument. I was on the right side of that one, too. Because you got to remember, Cy became a, a little belligerent in his... I mean, he was screaming and hollering, raising his voice. And so I just thought, I'm not... No, I'm not letting this... Lie. So I just kept. You weren't going to let it slide. No, I wasn't going to let it slide. And so the cameraman said, the first couple shots, nothing fell. The first duck that fell, fell to the right of the decoys behind the mound. Uh oh. <laughs> he said, the second duck that fell, fell to the left. Well, there's one duck that I had nothing to do with. So I'll give you that one. The third duck fell way out in front in the grass. I was like, we got that one. Because Cy si said, I didn't have anything to do with that, and he just claimed those two. And so then Cy, si, here was his response. And then he said, three left out to the left. So Cy si said, no, nope, that's why eyewitness reports are unreliable. I was like, what about actual footage? <laughs> he said, but he's interpreting the footage. And then he just got louder, and I thought, are you kidding me? The guy just watched it. So, yeah. So, Cy was the eyewitness report, though, and he was wrong. He actually makes his own argument there. Remember, the video footage, I don't know. He is, his know. face is on one of the DVDs we made, and the name of it, Cy's Looking, and the name of that is The Art of Claiming Ducks. Yeah. <laughs> and Cy is a master at it. No matter what happens, he said, boys, I don't know about y'all, but I got three out of three, two out of three, whatever it is. Today, he was saying he got two out of three, and, and Jace begged to differ. So tempers flared among the... That, but Jason, his name, his, Jason's name is Jason Silas Robertson. Uh-oh. Well, here you are, Phil, based on the evidence on what was said by the cameraman, on where the ducks were, in your humble opinion, how much credibility would you give Cy's version of the story? No credibility. It just, And that was the difference. A lot of times you don't really know, so you argue and it's fun. The way this all happened, I'm like, and we had just talked about that. I, I, I said twice, I said, Cy, what you've done is you've come up with a narrative in your mind what you think happened, what you believe happened, and you're convinced it happened. That when you fired two shots, I said, but I believe you're mistaken because the evidence is 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 real. Because mm. he said, Well, go back on the on the footage and see where the duck 
I mean, the dog picked up the duck. I said, Si, I don't have to go back on the footage. This is what was making him mad. I said, I saw the dog go get the duck. And they did, too. Bill said, Si, the dog picked the duck to the right so of what the So what, what does he say when you say that? Just, no. Here's what he said. <clears throat> he said, if you'll come down here and look at my angle, you'll see uh. that your angle is off. And <clears throat> Phil said, he's six feet away from you. <laughs> It's not going to change. Phil said, I'm sitting right beside you, which is weird. Usually, Cy has a backer just for fun. Yeah. But it was so ridiculous that nobody could back this. Well, it finally ended up of the line of the morning when Cy said, I've been hunting these ducks for 50 years, and let's face it, according to y'all, I ain't killed a duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he went to stretching all kind of arguments. Uh, well, he <clears throat> made it personal, and he said we were all full I of enjoyed crowd. the argument listening to him. I enjoyed yeah. it greatly. It was, it I was, was a lot getting of fun. a little bit hot just because I, he, he Cy si was getting a little rude. Yeah. I mean, he just started saying unreasonable things. I mean, like more than normal. Yep. And I was like, you know what? I need a break from this guy. <laughs> you got to remember, Jace. You got to just pawn it off on an old man. You know they get they get to a certain age. I I, I haven't hit that rage yet. I just say I missed, just there rolling. I missed a couple of shots over here. Well, then we I got into, bad. I got into an argument with Jay over. Now these are all spiritual issues. I mean, because that's what I'm saying. We talked about truth. It was fresh on my mind, and I just thought this is this hitting home now. This is just not true. Yeah. Now, I realize it's a small point, but I just yeah. thought, nope, I'm not going to let this These uh, left-wingers, as they call them, that particular group of individuals has turned, uh, they've made an art form out of stretching the truth. I mean, they, yeah. they, are, they are the... Pro I've never seen people set up a narrative and do what they do to keep that narrative going. And it's all built, it's all false. It's all lies. Let's, uh, all lies. let's take a quick break. I noticed Al the other day in his sermon, he used the material we had gone over in the podcast because I said, Lazarus, when he came back from the dead, that was actually the first zombie moment, you know. And then they had a dinner four days later, you know, after he'd been dead. And I know why they put that in there. Because if he had been dead for four days. Yeah, he was, I guess, the walking dead. The walking you, dead. You're, you're, you're hungry. And so when you think about it, the one thing we do is we got to eat. You got to eat. And you never know what's going to happen. You know, well, hey, look, you've got the pandemic. You've got the uh, disruption in the supply chain. You have a hard time getting hurricanes, hurricanes, hurricanes. riots. Yeah. But our friends at uh, uh, MyPatriotSupply.com have this 25-year 25, 25 um, food supply here. I guess it stays good for 25 years. Just by the way. We're going. I got our Sprinter van. We're going camping. You could also take this stuff. This is actually great uh, if you backpack. We backpack up in North Carolina. This would be a great backpacking food as well. But yeah, uh, get your get your supply. So uh, you can get a four week emergency food supply today from mypatriotsupply.com. That's mypatriotsupply.com. The original preparedness. Go to mypatriotsupply.com. Yeah, that's it. Uh, when my kids, I've, I've, when they were about six or seven, the older two, um, I got this book. That, uh, it's two books, or little children's books, like um, like a educational book, but they're like these lessons you go through. And it's called the uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. The logical. Uh, no, it's called the, the fallacy detective, and it's got this little dog on there, and he's like. He's a detective, and so he's uncovering fallacies, uh, which the which people use these in arguments all the time. And I didn't the the way I stumbled across this uh, this this has been a, a while ago, probably fifteen twenty years ago. I was I got in a debate with this guy, and uh, he was an atheist, and of course I'm a believer, and so we're debating back and forth on the merits of whether or not the claims of the Bible are true, and everything I would say. He would respond with uh, something of the effect of, he would say, that's a circumstantial ad hominem fallacy. And so I, I just is, heard... What, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to tell you. Oh. And so then I'd, I'd, I'd say something else. He'd say, that's a red herring fallacy. That's a... And he'd, whatever, he would put something in front of it. But he'd, every time I'd hear that word fallacy, I, would th I thought he was saying at the time that what I was saying was untrue. So I would cite my source and... 
Well, what is the definition of fallacy? That's not a word I use. That's what, that's what I'm getting to. Oh. So, so, so finally, he, he said, you wouldn't know a fallacy if it crawled out of your butt and made you breakfast. And so I thought, maybe See, I... that was going down the line uh, Sal was going down today. That, that was kind of his... Well, he was using he was using fallacies. So I I I Google oh, that was I, yeah. the fallacy. <clears throat> it was a fa- so I Google fallacy, and and what pops up is is uh, forty two logical fallacies that how people use how how they use fallacies. There, it's an error in reasoning. It's not necessarily a lie. It's or, or or something untrue. It's an error in reasoning. It's basically a lie. It's a way. It, so, so they've ca- they formed these ways that people, when they argue, they they basically manipulate the truth. And I'm reading through them, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like how I argue. Think <laughs> about is, it. Think about well, it. Well, that's what it was. This they're morning. looking. Yeah. I'm gonna say from now on, I'm gonna say fallacy. It's a look, fallacy. Look, think about it. What we're all seeing is billions <clears throat> of dollars of destruction yeah. at the hands of. Looters, rioters, so forth. We're seeing billions of dollars worth of damage that they've done. And th- there's one side of on all this says it- it's not happening. It's been peaceful protest. Yeah. You're like, no, there's billions of dollars of worth of buildings, produce, uh, broken windows. Yeah. I said they're t- either taxed. Just rampaging through it and just taking everything they want, steal everything that's there, or burn it down. And the narrative is, it's not happening. And, and you can't really get to it. It's a re- all been it, peaceful. I'm like, well, man. I said, it, but but here's the kicker: they really believe it. I don't know if they do believe it, Phil. I think that they're lying. I think that it's it's the way we communicate. I think they have been given a delusion well, by yeah, the yeah, Almighty. Yeah, yeah, well, where's that are? verse that says they've been given a delusion? Uh, uh, that's it Second that's, Thessalonians. God will yep. send them a powerful I mean, let's delusion. Second Thessalonians it. too. Because I mean, I think there's a. It's like if you decide to reject God, He then, since He's pursuing all of us. Do we agree that he wants everyone to be saved? So yeah. in essence, if you believe that, then you believe that he is in pursuit of all of us. But at some point, not with him because he's eternal, you're like, I'm not I'm not surrendering. I don't care about God. I don't care if Jesus was crucified, shot, whatever. At some point, then you see these types of phrases, which when I was young in the faith, I had trouble with them. Because it says God, like in Romans 1, it says God gave them over to do not, to do... To a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. Yeah, to do what ought not to be done. And you see here about the delusion. So how would y'all explain that to someone who's young in the faith? What does that mean? That God sends them a powerful delusion? Well, yeah, or like he gives them over. Well, I think I, uh, so that they will believe the lie. And yeah, so that all, right. all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Well, the re- They're saying their wickedness is nothing wrong with it. It's not happening. We're, we're not guilty of tearing up anybody's property, burning people's business. We're not guilty as charged. It's peaceful protest. Well, what's the, what's the unforgivable sin in the Bible? Yep, the uh, and the, we've had questions about when, that. When, you, when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, so the unforgivable so, sin is mean? the sin you won't say is a sin. Yeah, it's a it's a old, if, if 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 John fourteen, if Jesus is right in John fourteen through John seventeen, and that the primary role of the Holy Spirit, not the only role, but the primary role, is to deliver the believer into all truth, is to reveal truth to the to to not just the believer even the non-believer when he convicts us uh, convicts the non-believer of their sin uh, John 16 if 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 his role <clears throat> in the triune god is to deliver truth and we reject him the one who would illuminate our hearts to reality there's the, the reason why it's unforgivable is because there's no other mechanism you, you're rejecting truth and so like Romans 1 uh, uh, they perish because they refused 
to love the truth and so be saved. See, that's what second. Th- oh, I didn't even know it said that. Second, this- but Second Thessalonians too. But it, you know, and this <clears throat> this is coming. I mean, this verse comes from this idea of the revealing of the man of lawlessness. Yep. Now, whoever that exactly is, there's a hundred thousand uh, interpretations of what exactly that means. But when you just think about the phrase. What does that mean? A man of lawlessness. Man of sin. Yeah, or or man of sin. Everyone it, who it, sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Well, the man of lawlessness, if you'll notice in Second Thessalonians, he starts out, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. When you get down a little further, it goes from he to they. You say it started out singular, he, the man of lawlessness, and it sets it up. And by the way, you say, well, is he going to be done away with? Not until Jesus comes. When he's when he goes down and gone, the lawless want to be then the lawless don't want to be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Mm. When Jesus returns, he said, that's when. I'm going to clean it up. Well, First John three four says every, the wicked every, will go that way, and the righteous will go this way. Yeah, make, That's sure, the, make sure you're in the right camp. First John three four says everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But if you have someone who's not acknowledging that, saying no, they're calling something is clearly sinful. That's right. And they say no. That's that's not against God's law. It's going to be real difficult if you if you don't get past that step to then appreciate Jesus on a cross dying for your sins, which is the breaking of God's law. But you're saying, well, I never sinned. That's really what it's coming down to. That's why a lot of people in their invitations, they say, well, you admit that you're a sinner. Because some people who have been given over by God because they're saying, not sin, even though they felt guilty the first time. They will look you straight in the conscience. eye. There's been a whole movement, and everybody's getting all stirred up about Ruth Bader Ginsburg mm-hmm. because she was, I mean, a staunch. There's a human being inside the womb of their mother. There's a human being in there. Yeah, They're saying, looking you straight in the face, they're not a person yet. They're not a person. You're like, Two arms, two legs, ears, mouth, nose. What are you talking about? You know good and well that's a person. Well, you were that, there at but one that time. That may be out of ignorance. I mean, calling. They're saying it, yeah. there's nothing wrong with killing that because well, I have a God given right to choose no, I think that's a good to point. kill what's not a person. So, it's not a person. Yeah. Well, there's a, there is a, uh, I always, I used to say, man, when they hit rock bottom, then they'll see. And, and it's like, well, no, yeah. there's no such thing as rock bottom. Rock bottom is death. I think the more you get into your depravity, the more you believe the lie. And I think all these texts about like Romans 1, 2 Thessalonians, I think that what it's getting at, Romans 1 is a great example, because we have I've heard that I've heard Romans 1 preach before, and it lists all the things that are going down in Romans 1, all the sins that people are committing, and they're in it and it's it, it's it's preached in a way where it looks like that God's mad at them because of what they're doing. But if you read the, you read the text, God, what all those sins that that is the wrath of God. It's God just like saying, if that's what you want, I'm I'm pulling back and I'm giving you over to yourself to a depraved mind. It's it's, 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 it's be, think about the description. Well, he's right. Senseless. Now just think about a human being that God says they are senseless. They're faithless. They are heartless, yeah. and they are ruthless. Well, if that's the description of a certain grade of individuals who do not think the, the worthy to retain the knowledge of God, if you're that far gone, it's that, it's, it's that's, hell. It's why it's, that's beyond it's why, turning. That's why Paul says in, in First Thessalonians that hell is being shut out of the presence of the Lord. And th- like we talked about yesterday, if heaven is being in the presence of the Lord, then hell would be being out of his presence. So you look at these cities like um, 
Portland and Seattle and, 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 and these autonomous zones that they've set up and all that, just the chaos. This is the, and this that's not even the end result of it, but that's a further progression of this is the freedom that we're looking at, that we want, they're crying out for, and then you look at it like, that does not look like freedom at all. Look, they're looking, the news media, the vast majority of it, are saying to us, the Democratic Party, is they're saying to us, it's not happening. Yeah. Sinful behavior is, we're not guilty of any sin. Well, let's, uh, let's, we, we, let's, we uh, haven't done anything wrong. Let, let's take a quick break. One of the things about when you have a hurricane, you lose a lot of your trees. A lot of I, them. I mean, they are. Hundreds we lost. Yeah. Hundreds. But what oh, we, that's a war zone out there. What we do in the duck blinds is we try to get the trees growing in the proper positions for concealment. Yep. So. That's where fastgrowingtrees.com comes into play, our sponsor here. Which you you. Which I'm not sure, Phil, if, if, I mean, you have a lot of trees. To, you plant a lot of trees. A lot of trees. So I don't know if they sponsored us because they want you to. I need to, to check want. out the various varieties they have. You know, the ball cypress, if they have them on hand, yeah. I like, I'll buy some from them. Well, they've got all kind of trees and shrubs, and they've got fruit, uh, fruit trees as well. I plant a lot of those. And you, too, as well, can go to fastgrowingtrees.com. And if you put in uh, our code, which is fastgrowingtrees.com slash fill, you get 10% off. So we all get 10% off anything we buy from there. 10% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash fill. That's fastgrowingtrees.com slash fill. It's good. I think there's two things. If you don't acknowledge your sin and you don't acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God, the path becomes impossible now i have you know if you read hebrews 6 which i know is another i'm not sure why we got on into all these controversial passages <laughs> but hebrews 6 people go there to try to argue you know whether you can fall away or not and that's a hot button debate but from God's perspective, you got to remember, he's not bound by time. He knows everything simultaneously. So that's why you're not falling away from God's perspective because he already knows the beginning, the middle, and the end. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that, you know, when people say, well, I believe I'm once saved, I always say, well, you are in God's eyes because he already sees everything simultaneously. God's not God's not surprised by what he, happens. He God's knows. God's just, just not surprised. Yeah. So when you read something like Hebrews six, which I, I this gives me encouragement because it, it one, it keeps you humble, it keeps you acknowledging your sin, but it also keeps you acknowledging the payment for your sin, which is Jesus. But in Hebrews six, verse four, it says, It is impossible, impossible. For those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance. Now you say, what happened here? What happened to their heart? Because he, this was in the context about growing in your faith. And he was using that as a positive. If you get you grow and you become familiar with all these, uh -huh. you know, you'll be a mature, let us move on from the elementary truths. You'll be a mature person in the faith. But then he makes this statement, if they fall away, be brought back to repentance, because to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. And I believe his point is, which he kind of does it in an analogy in verse 7 and 8. It says, land that drinks in the rain often fallen on it, which is a growing crop. And that produces a crop useful to those for, for whom it is farm receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. And I think it's the same concept. Once you have an understanding where you're cut to the heart by your sin and you see the transformation and you grow in the faith and you taste all the, the blessings. I mean, this was five we have here being enlightened, tasting the heavenly gift, having the Holy spirit, uh, understanding the word of God powers of the coming age. I mean, you, you get the whole process and then you just say, 
No. Not enough. Not enough. Well, why would you ever come back? That's really the point. Yeah, it's not that. about God not forgiving them, because he is love. He, he is forgiving all it's, the time. It's, it's just there's it's, nothing more past Jesus. And so they're ultimately what they're well, saying is... Well, and your sin, you see, because that's where it starts. It starts saying, I'm doing wrong, but I don't believe it's wrong. Because when people chunk Jesus, what do they do? A lot of sin. No doubt about no, it. You got to get yourself well, there's, away there's, from Jesus in order to embrace a just hardcore simple there, there, life. There's two school of thoughts on, on Hebrews 6, though. One argument would be that these people were never saved in the first place and that they were... Well, right. But, um, but from God's perspective, he knows. So that's why I tell people, I'm like, they say, do you believe uh, once saved, always saved? I say, well, from God's perspective, I do. Because he knows. Now, from my perspective, I have no idea. I can't go around and say, you're saved, you're not. You're So I just don't, because I believe that's would fall into the judgmental category. And I don't know. I just say, you better stick with Jesus, and I'll love you, and I'll help you. If they call me, I'll come and try to help, you know, however I can. But I think there's way too much judging business in that, that line. Now, I do believe Christians are supposed to judge other Christians, because of, is it 1 Corinthians 5 or 2 Corinthians 5? One of them. When they had a situation in the church where it's this, this same situation. You had a guy sleeping with, I guess it was his stepmom. Is that what we're saying? Yep. And they get down to the end, and he's like, you need to confront him. And he then has a scenario where he's like, expel the wicked man from among you. He's basically disfellowship. But, but, and then it says... We aren't supposed to judge those outside the church, which was my point, but those inside. If you have a person who is having an open affair, calling what we know is wrong, right, and saying, you know what, this is right, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, no, there's a group of people there saying this is not what Jesus wants out of us. Yeah. And then if he fights it, they're saying, well, disfellowship. But he basically gave the uh, direction to have conversations about people who are claiming to be with Christ, who are openly, undeniably living a sinful lifestyle. Because they're in danger from the things that we're reading, from God giving them over. Because you can't call wrong right in the name of Jesus. We sure can't do that. There's so, a lot of it going on. Yeah, yeah. But, but I would say that the judging somebody, if the Scripture does teach that a person can fall away from faith, uh, then we should say you could fall away from your faith by, by doing by this, whatever that is. Now, we may not be able to judge the individual person's heart, but we could say that the Scripture teaches, or if it teaches that you can't, then we should say that, which I'm not going to tell you what I think, because I would need, I would, I would really want to unpack this. Well, that. I told you what I thought. I think from God's perspective... Once you're saved, you're always saved. I do think it's... I, From I, our perspective, therefore we my don't brothers, know. Therefore, my brothers, Second Peter, mm. be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, and he gave the list, goodness to knowledge, self-control, to perseverance, godliness, to brotherly kindness, love, It'll keep you from being ineffective, unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus. If you do, if you do these things, you will never fall and you'll receive a rich welcome. Well, if you do these certain things like uh, goodness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness. And but all those kind, are fruits of the Spirit, right? Yeah, fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. So if you live like that, you say you'll never fall. But if you do these things and you never fall, if you don't do them, <laughs> you can fall. It's the way my view, my view of it is. Well, I think that's It's why hard I, to blow it, what God has done for yeah. us. You got constant mediating work from Jesus at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. It's hard to blow it. But if you come up and you're living like the devil, what shall we say? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. You died to sin. How can you live in it any longer? So well, well, let me explain a different way then. I say, let's take 1 Corinthians 10, which I mean, I agree with what you're saying. 
I'm just trying to explain a very difficult passage and a different a difficult statement when it says God gave them over. If you go to First Corinthians ten, hold on. One, this is this is really good, but let's take a break. Yeah, I've noticed we were talking in the blind, saying I can't get a signal. It feels like, well, why don't you just wave? <laughs> I said, no, it's a signal <laughs> on our phone. <laughs> Trying to explain things like that can be difficult. Yeah, Phil, we've already mentioned yesterday that you you didn't know what Instagram was. <laughs> yeah. So you probably don't have that app on the phone that you also do not have. But for the rest of us out there who do use technology and all the people that support what you're doing to have technology like me and Dan and everybody else, uh, there is a mic, uh, there's a patriotmobile.com. I feel you must be a patriot because we all of our sponsors so have the patriot in the name. So go to patriotmobile.com slash Phil, and you can get a free activation. Plus, you get a a special gift with our offer code, which our offer code is Phil. Or you can call the U.S.-based customer service team, and that number is 972-PATRIOT. Really simple to remember. That's 972-PATRIOT. Veterans and first responders save even more. So please go to patriotmobile.com slash Phil and make the switch today. In 1 Corinthians 10, he comes up with an analogy of what happened in Israel via the old law, which was where sin was written on stone and they couldn't keep them, right? Well, then he gets to verse 6 of of 1 Corinthians 10, 6, and he says these things occurred as examples. And he, he comes up with a list on how someone is separated from God. It's a process. And he says, these things happen because, you know, God uh, judged them in Old Testament, and they were, a lot of them were massacred because they denied him and were separated from him. And he talks about that. Their bodies were scattered across the desert, what 10.5 says. So it starts off saying, to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. So would we agree the separation from God starts right there? When you set your heart on evil things. The second thing that happens is verse 7. Do not be idolaters as some of them were as it is written. We touched on that. What is idolatry? If you have a heart set on evil, you have to have some way to justify it, to rationalize it, because God wrote on our conscience right from wrong. Would you agree? Uh Yep. So they rationalize it, and it says... uh, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry because whatever their idol was was excusing the evil that they wanted to do. Then Wood, three, Woodstock, Woodstock on steroids. All right. Three, then goes the next phase. We shouldn't commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And then one day, and he, here's the judgment, 23,000 of them died. So now we have a process for me. You have an idea in your heart. It's something you want to do. You may see a good-looking woman, she's half-naked, and you're thinking. But you know that's, you know, you're married. So you're like, no. So somehow or another, you've got to justify it. So it's like, well, my wife don't even love me anyway. I mean, I, who's, who's not to say? So, you're, so you come up with an idea, call it idolatry, but it's just a way to rationalize what you want to do. Once you start down that path, it won't be long. You'll be doing number three, the actual sex. Yep. And then what happens? In reality, what happens after? Nothing. You know, nobody comes and takes you. To, you know, God doesn't strike you, you know, with lightning. I mean, you may get a sexually transmitted disease, but it still takes a while for even that to have the consequences, which is what I think leads to number four. We should not test the Lord as some of them did and were killed by snakes because what we know what happens. Once you start down that road, you say, well, I'm only going to do it that one time. No, it's not going to work because your heart is set on evil. You've mm-hmm. justified it, and now you got a taste of the glory. It happens and a lot. So then you test the Lord, and you say, what does it mean? Well, now you're doing it and justifying it and even maybe going to church on Sundays and saying, well, you know, I'm sorry, I, you know, forgive me, but your heart's away from God. I think that's his point. So now you're testing the Lord. 
Because he's looking at your heart and your life saying, it ain't adding up. And that produces the fifth one, which is a guilty conscience, and do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. Now, to me, the last time I went over this on a podcast, I did it because I, when you see your kids with a bad attitude, they just, you, they just wake up and they get in a bad attitude. And you're like, what's wrong with this person? I, from reading this passage, I just back it up. I, I believe there's sin in the camp when the attitude is bad. So I'm like, why are you grumbling? Because I believe they have a guilty conscience because they're testing the Lord. They're in some sinful activity. They've rationalized it. And it all started because they got off in their heart and mind. Now, how I'm applying this to us and Christians and being saved. and Because if you keep reading verse 11, he says, These things happened to them as example. He says it twice. And were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages come. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. So in our perspective, based on what I read, yeah, you can fall away from what you have. Because he just said it. Be careful that you don't fall. But watch what he says. And here's from God's perspective, which was my point. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. So there's not, because most people say, well, I just couldn't help it. Or I was born a certain way. And, you know, like people use with anger or something, you yeah. know, I, I'm just a hothead or, you know, I was born that way. No, you wasn't. You, you rationalize in your mind saying there's something wrong with my DNA that's causing do, me to do, do it. Do you know, when you say, when you keep using that term, you rationalize a, another term for that is you're using fallacies fallacy idolatry so then he says this and this is what goes with john 14 and what we're talking about god is faithful that's why i said from his perspective he had moved he is love Mm -hmm. he is forgiveness he will save you from moment to moment and i like this And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So he's offering that. But when you are tempted, he will also provide, I like this, these next two words, a way. Because Jesus, John 14, I am the way. Let's take a break. He will provide a way out so that you can stand up under. So what I'm saying is if a person falls, it is 100% them and not God. Because not only does he save you, he provides a way out, and he's not going to let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Yeah, that's important because if you... If you say that there's a degree of sin that you can commit post salvation to where God's like, eh, that was too much. I think much. this would prove that impossible. You, you can't. You can't. And then you diminish the blood of Christ, and you diminish you diminish His sacrifice. And we can't say because then what is what is that level? What is that point? That's why I think this whole discussion. You're right. I think I think this goes back to the concept of truth, the mm-hmm. revelation of the Holy Spirit of truth. Even our definition of sin. I mean, well, how do we define sin? I think we've defined it in, in a wrong way because we make it sound like sin is some violation of some arbitrary commandment that God gave us. Almost, it's almost presented like this: that there's that God's up there and He says, "Here's a list of rules to follow, and if you guys can follow these rules and prove your loyalty to me, then I'll let you in." And that's not. That's not it. No. The, these, are, I think, you could justify saying that was it under the law of Moses. No, not even that. It but was but all, I'm saying you could say that it, he would proved that you can't because because if you kept the law a hundred percent, well, you should be saved, right? Yeah, you, you should be, but nobody can keep it. Well, that's my yeah. point. It, I'm saying you could it's not that you, nobody you can make can an keep argument. It. Nobody has kept it. Good point. Good point. Well, except now you're getting into what I say when we get this other argument about like reaching an age of becoming a lawbreaker, which is Romans seven nine to me is pretty clear. When, if he, you when read he said Matthew, once I was alive apart from law, when the commandment came, sin sprang life, and I died. If you read Matthew, Mark, 
Luke, and John. And you read what Jesus said. He said a lot of other things, according to John, but he said enough to where you can check him out on what he said. I, I've scratched my head more than once saying, what exactly did he mean by that? And what, what exactly was, was he saying there? But as far as finding a mistake, a misstep, zero. So you got back to John 14. If anyone loves me, which is your motivation, that's a deep thing for anyone who loves Jesus. Jesus is talking. He will obey my teaching. If he loves me. In, in, in the same way. So you're being, he's motivating you, not by fear. By love. He, he's motivating love. you by love. And he said, my father will, will, will love him and we'll come to him and make our home with him. Oh, that's in, well, John 14, 15 says that. And then this is, what you're this reading is now is 23. 14, 23. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. Yeah. I, so I'm a 74-year-old male. I'm, I'm listening to the, the man, God, who becomes a man, a human being, God in flesh, John 1, John 1, 14. And I've come to a conclusion. I love him. Yeah, that's good. Now, look, yeah. I've had trouble even telling my woman I loved her. <laughs> but I, and, and for hey. the first 30 years after my conversion, I didn't go around telling people I love Jesus because yeah. they're like, you what? <laughs> But at 74, I love him. Yeah, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's good. Because yeah. I read this, and I'm like, if, if, if he who does not love me will not obey what my command. Yeah, it's like it's like yeah. your it's like a relationship. I mean, it has to be deeper than. It's got to be. Deeper. Oh, I better not mess up here. It's like I no, yeah. I love my Lord. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, it's but, like the, when the, I was a kid, you know, that Phil and Kay, they didn't tell us they loved us. I mean, you it just wasn't. Do you remember the first time that he told you that? It wasn't the Robertson way. In I case mean, I ever missed it, it Jace, re- uh, trust me now, I do love you. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> it. I, that's probably the <laughs> third or fourth time. I mean, I was a grown adult. And, no, yeah. Phil did it through. He he made a big deal the first time because <laughs> he just said, I never have said this, you know. So Well, Al, I think Al told me the story, Phil. That Bill Smith had preached a sermon on love. The, everybody was grown, and you felt yeah. convicted by it, so you come yeah. home and and – Everybody's eating lunch or whatever, and you say, "Hey, hey, 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 hey! Everybody, stop what you're doing! I got to tell y'all yeah. something." <laughs> I think I'm here for this. I was gonna tell y'all, I love you. Yeah. And all of a sudden, everybody was like, <laughs> and then everybody laughed because it was like, "Well, that wasn't that." Yeah. Hard. And when I got, the, I told you about scratching the head. Uh, I scratched my head on things like, "Love your enemies." Yeah. I'm like, "Well, right." Do what? He said, love your enemies. So I always tell them the hoop net story when the people were stealing fish from me. And I'd always scared them off with the shotgun yeah. saying, don't be stealing my fish. Yeah, yeah. So finally one day I said, Jesus said, love them. I said, I, I, it won't work, but I'll try it because mm-hmm. he said it. So I said, I, I'm actually going to see if that works. Well, I go out there and the people who are stealing my fish I said, boys, you know, I, I got them at gunpoint, but I didn't have the gun on them. <laughs> I had a gun with me it just was, in case. But then I said, love. I said, guys, you, you don't have to steal them. I'll give them to you. And they looked at each other. But and that then, did work better. It yeah. actually did. Yeah. Well, they quit when, stealing when, from it. When you say, but when you said, um, kind of, when you talk about the motivation, I was thinking about, and I've used this before in, in sermons, um, my relationship with, with my wife, Jill. And, uh, I'm gonna tell you what would not work in our relationship. If 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 I was faithful to her, which I have been, but if if if, if my motivation and I told her, look, there, there's a woman that I really want to, I really want to be with, but I'm gonna be faithful to you because it's the right thing to do. That that wouldn't work too well. No, because no. your heart. That's why. Yeah. I, that's why the chain of events that started First Corinthians ten was the heart. I mean, it's like my wife. She would tell me a lot that she loved me you know early on because you gotta remember we dated for months before either one of us you know said i love you i said it once when we were dating 
I mean, I literally subscribe to the, if I change my mind, I'll let you know. <laughs> We're good. But after a while, I was like, why, why do I feel like that's such a big, I do love this woman. So, you know, now I tell her all the time. Mm-hmm. And I do tell people I love Jesus because to me, a lot of times I get into a bind. I mean, the other night I went to this event, there were maybe five sober people there. I mean, and I was one of them. And uh, I don't know any other way to to keep it from coming awkward. And I don't like feeling threatened. And so when people are like, you know, what you drinking tonight? I was like, oh, I'm drinking Jesus. <laughs> that just ends it. You know? and Because ever, then everywhere, on, what you, I noticed is... Did you just is, say you don't want it to get awkward? Yeah, I didn't want it to get awkward. <laughs> well, for me, I don't I'm care right. if it's awkward for them. But I'm like, I don't want want to be tempted in this situation where and and I've said many times, it's not a it's not a sin to drink, but I could just tell these people they were drunk. Trust me, half of them couldn't stand up. And uh but that's just what cuz everybody I notice when they're like that, they don't realize what they're talking about because they're drunk. So every group that I took a picture with or went with, they would say, well, let me get you a drink. That, that, it was the same scenario over and over and over and over. And even though I could drink, I, I chose not to because I thought, y'all are embarrassing. You're embarrassing yourself, you know. And uh, so I'd say that. I'd say, I love Jesus. And they're, they're like, oh, you had a drinking problem in the past. You know, one of them asked me that. And I said, nope, never had a drinking problem. Then they're like they're short circuited. Yeah. Well, I think that I think that what this is, what this all boils down to, and just to sum it up at the end here, is that what what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us is not necessarily the, whether something's right or wrong. I think He's revealing what is truth and what is lie, and He's what He's He's telling us about reality, and He's saying. This is the way to experience the abundant life because that's what we're promised, and, and it's the not. Spirit is a great, great help. Oh, well, right, and, and, and I think him, that's what we're getting to. I can't is, imagine trying to roll without him. Oh, but look, when he says in John fourteen, which is what we're going to talk about next time, but he said, "I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth." Well, if you're living your life in deceit and lies, and I don't mean just you know, in a duck blind, arguing about who killed what. <laughs> you know, that's some kind of childhood, you know, trauma coming out. But, I mean, in your life, when you're doing things that you know are wrong and you're justifying them and acting like they're not wrong, I mean, that's a dangerous line to be walking. Because yep. supposedly, if you got the spirit and tr- uh, the truth living inside of you, yeah, it's not going to work nope. to be calling wrong right. It, yep, it's that, just not that, going to work. That's good. All right. Well, that's it for today. Make sure you guys check us out on iTunes and subscribe to our podcast, Unashamed. Also, um, go to uh, uh, subscribe to The Blaze at blazetv.com slash unashamed, and you can get a discount with our code there. That's blazetv.com slash unashamed. And you guys can uh, get access to our Behind the Paywall exclusive uh, content just for you. Thanks for listening to The Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.